Hi, I'm Nagdan Sari, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can create this smoke effect. So, along the way, you will learn about sub UV because sub UV is much important in Niagara system, and how you can create Niagara materials and how you can use forces in your Niagara system. So, without any further ado, let's begin. So, in here, first of all, let's just create a Niagara emitter. Go to effects and create a Niagara emitter. I don't want to copy existing because I want to start from scratch. Create an empty one, hit finished, and no, let's just call it NE for Niagara emitter, and I want to call it a smoke. Okay, double click on it to open it. Let's just dock it here. Let's just close this parameter for now so you can see it clearly. We need a, sp a sprite renderer, it is okay, and it choose a material. We will change the material. First of all, how the smoke looks like, how we can create an smoke. Just think about it. We need some particle, right? They go up and uh, along the way, when they are going up, the size of them get bigger and the opacity of them get smaller, right? That's how a smoke works, I think. So first of all, let's just go to emitter spawn and choose a spawn rate because that's how a smoke works, right? A spawn rate, you should set fix it because you should add this spawn rate in emitter update. So that's okay. Just, you can just add it here in emitter update and what i want to do let's just add some particle okay like 50 and that's okay for now but add some velocity to it right so for doing that you know it by now this video is a part of a video series playlist of video about niagara system we did talk about materials a lot as a matter of fact we have a full playlist of videos about materials we start from scratch and after that we start with niagara and we learn a lot from niagara we thought we did talk about all the parameters all the attributes all the modules no we want to use those knowledge to create our smoke right so for adding velocity you know that in every video we had some initial velocity right so let's just add that here as well just search for velocity add velocity and right now it give us an error if we click on fix issue it just adds solve force and velocity and the problem goes away right so now in this add velocity you can see because at default z is 50 and z is this blue line in here so it will go up so it will add 50 velocity to the z direction right that makes sense but in a smoke all the particle in a smoke won't go up like each other the velocity of each particle different from difference from each other right so what we can do we can change this velocity to a random range vector okay we randomize it right so click on this arrow in here and in here you can see there is a suggestion here that you can use random range vector and in here what i want to do i just want to add some velocity to z direction because the smoke goes up not to ride down all of, and all of that right so let's just add some value here like 50 and 100 for maximum okay so we can give it a minimum and maximum value right so with that you can see no some particle goes faster and some particle goes slower right next thing to do let's just click on initialize particle we didn't talk about it so we should talk about it right now right so what i want to do in here i want to change the lifetime to a random value because the particle of the smoke won't die together right so you should change that right so click on this life mode lifetime mode and change it to random and let's just change it to two to three okay so we have random killing time <laughs> i can see it clearly it's more look like an smoke right now right i don't want to change the color i don't want to change the position mode but know that we reach the position the position that all of these particle is spawning is at a point but a smoke in real time won't do that it will um one of the particle for the smoke spawn here one of them spawn here one of them spawn here and all of that right so what we can do about that we can add a shape so we can use a shape to tell Niagara system to spawn or a smoke particle on that shape right that makes sense I hope it does so for that let's just click on this plus on this particle spawn and search for location okay and you can see it give us some suggestion and some other location as well the location that or a, a smoke particle we wanted to spawn right so in here we have static mesh as well we have skeletal mesh as well okay so maybe you have a character that uh, on its shoulder or in its eyes there is some smoke that goes out right <laughs> that's cool so we can use a skeletal mesh or a static mesh or we can use just system location jitter position grid location but this time what i want to do i want it just a simple shape so click on shape location okay and in this shape location let's just use this sphere and decrease this sphere radius to 
16 for example okay i think that's better now right but it's not as cool as it can get right and we will fix that don't worry about it so the next thing the next thing that comes to my mind to what we should do now is that um first of all i want to make this infinite okay so for that let's just go to emitter state i want to change this to self i did talk about this a lot it is at it should be at infinite okay let's just change this loop direction to two okay and you can see it's two right now and i think it's better right so now that we change this what we should do what a smoke looks like in a real world i think it should um get bigger and the opacity get, should get smaller right so let's just do that so for doing that i want to use a scale color to change its alpha that makes sense okay so let's just do that in here search for scale color okay and in this scale color if you click on it you can see i don't want to scale the color but what i want to do i want to scale the alpha and i want to use a curve for this right so let's just click in here and say float from curve let's just search it you can search it right so float from curve Right now, you can see at the time zero, it is one. The opacity is one. But at time one, that is the end of our particle lifetime, is the opacity is less. And you can see it clearly. The opacity at the end of the particle lifetime is zero, right? It's cool, but we can make it more smooth, okay? So we can just use this um, template here, but we can just shift select these two like this and right click on it and change it to auto, okay? And you can see it smooth, smooth it out, okay? So if I click in here, you can see the curve better in here. It's cool, right? No, it looks better. So I want to change the size of that as well. You can see we did use normalized age and I did talk about normalized age a lot. When you use normalized edge, the beginning of the lifetime of the particle will be zero and the end of the lifetime of the particle will be one. Okay, so that's it. That's normalized edge. This horizontal value is normalized edge, zero to one. So we did the alpha. What I want to do now, I want to change the scale of our smoke particle. You know that a smoke at the first is small and at the end it gets bigger and bigger and it, the opacity of that gets smaller and smaller. And let's just do that. For doing that, first of all, you should go to initialize particle and in here set the sprite attribute let's just click on this sprite so we can just see the sprite right so click on here and change the sprite size mode to uniform because we don't want to change it on uniform right non-uniform we want to change it uniform right so let's just the 30 is enough just you should know that you should set this so you can change it in particle update afterward right so we need rotation as well so let's just click the, on that and click on random okay right now we can't see it but when we add some sprite and some material to this you can see it clearly right so let's just leave it at that we don't want to do anything so now let's just go to particle update and in here i want to save a scale okay or just search for size and because we want to scale a sprite size click on scale a sprite size and you can see at default it's not cool so why it's not cool let's just click on here and bring the tote in here so we can see it clearly you can see at the time zero it is zero and at the time one one it is one so zero is not good in here so what we can do about that first of all what i want to do i want to click on this first keyframe in here and change it to one okay so you can see it it does start at one and stop at one right but i don't want to do that what i want to do i want to at the end at time number one in here i want it to be three for example and now you can see it get bigger and bigger and at the end the opacity is less and but the size is big okay so everything is working fine you can see it here but you can't see it so if you click in here hit f you bring it in focus so let's just click on these two keyframes by holding shift and click both of them and in here it says multiple value and no right click on one of them and change it to auto okay and no it's a smoother right so if you make it this way it will be a smoother that's cool so everything i think it's cool we, we want to add something else to it but before doing that i want to talk about the material niagara material we want a material for this this um these circles is not good enough so what we can do let's just go to our content drawer and create a material in here and i want to call it m for material and a smoke okay because we want to use
use this M as smoke for over the smoke, right? So I'll click on it to open it. That's it. No, let's just go to content drawer. What I want to do, just go to example content in here. If you don't have it, you can download it on Marketplace. It's free and it's cool to look at. Go to effects. There is a lot of cool stuff in here. Go to textures and you can see there is a texture in here. Just drag and drop it here. And first of all, let's just connect it to the base color so you can see it here. Change this to plain and you can see it's just some tiled smoke okay you can see it clearly that's cool we can use that right so for using that you know it by now in the last video i did talk about it a lot when you want to create a niagara material what you should do first of all you should add a particle color okay and with this particle color let me explain to you why we should use this particle color if you don't add this particle color you won't be able to change the color of this um, material in Niagara system and you can if you don't connect the alpha of this particle color you can change the opacity of that as well so you always should multiply your values with this particle color so you can have access your material in Niagara system right so we want to use this a smoke tiled image or texture or whatever you want to call it and I want to use the RGB on base color okay because we don't want to have emissive color it's just a smoke it shouldn't have a emissive color right so by just connecting it connecting it to base color it's okay so what we should do about this particle color how we can connect it. for connecting it we should drag and drop from here and multiply it okay by the rgb value of this particle color and output of this multiply should be connected to the base color now we have access to the color of our texture sample and the base color of our material in niagara system right so next thing to do it doesn't have alpha what we should do about that in particle color we have alpha and in this texture sample we have alpha as well let's just click it and show it to you if we double click in it if it's open let's just click in here and open it like this so it open up in another screen and you can see it has alpha okay it has alpha so we can use that alpha right so for using that alpha we should grab it okay and multiply it by the alpha of this particle color like this and we want to connect this alpha to the opacity but opacity is not enabled if you don't know why it's not enabled just watch my playlist of videos about material i did talk about opacity a lot in there as a matter of fact there is a complete video about just opacity if you click on this material and change this blend mode to translucent for example no you have access to opacity and we can connect this to here and no you can see we have opacity in here everything cool everything is working correctly so I think our material is finished and we can use it. Let's just save it and go to our Niagara emitter in a sprite renderer. We want to change this to our material that we just created. One way to find it like this to search it, but I think the better way is to find it where you create it. Because when your game get bigger and bigger, you can't find it easily so let's just drag and drop it and put it in here and right now you can't see anything why you can see anything let just this shader compile so now you can see it's not cool it's just showing you that 64 image okay let me again show you the texture that we just use and this was the texture right so this is our texture let me show you this way this is the texture and we want to use every frame in here you can see it's frame 0 frame 1 frame 2 frame 3 and it create an animation and it called a tiled or a sub uv okay so when you have multiple image in one texture map it's called sub uv and we can use every each one of them separately and now i want to show you how you can do that let's just go to our emitter right now it, it is using all of them in same place okay so what we can do about that if you collapse everything in this as a sprite renderer you can see it better in this sub uv you know that this image is a sub uv right so click on expand this and you know it it's 8 by 8 so let's just change this to 8 by 8 okay and now you can see the smoke is looking better right now right <laughs> i think so everything is cool but let's just change something this sub uv blending enable okay for check if you check this it will blend the last frame with the second frame when you add sub uv animation you can see we, in here we have 64 frame for this sub uv image okay but we are using just one of them so just click in here nothing happened but if you go here and search for sub uv animation and add it here okay let's just bring it up like this 
and at default it find it correctly and now you can see it use the sub uv animation correctly right so everything is cool and it looks more like a, a smoke right so i want to change something else in here let me see uh, first of all, you know it this in this sub uv animation you can see it has linear curve random infinite i want to use linear and a start frame is zero and end frame is 63 that is 64 frame because it's a start from zero right so it looks like a smoke more but let's just add something else so now what i'm gonna do you know that we add some velocity to it we want to add more velocity in particle update i didn't talk about this but let's just talk about it right now for adding more velocity to our particles at update stage we should click on this plus and search for force there is a lot of force in here that you can simulate like wind force vortex force vector noise force there is a lot of them but the one that i want to use is acceleration force let's just click on that and change the acceleration for example 500 okay and now you can see it looks better but no 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 that's a lot 100 and no, I think it's look better, but it's look um, not as real. What is the problem? Let's just go to initialize particle. Click on all so you can see everything in here. I want to change some values in here because right now we add some material to it. Now we can play with this and make it look cooler, right? So click in here. What I want to do, I want to change this random uniform, right? So click on that. On that. I want to add with that we can change the sprite size from a minimum and maximum and randomize it okay because it should be randomized right so for that i want to change this to 50 75 and 200 for example okay no you can see it looks a lot better when you randomize something always it looks better just randomize everything with niagara system when you randomize something it always looks better so next thing to do i want to change this a sprite rotation mode right now it's at uh, random but i want to change it to direct normalized angle okay and what it means it means that uh, normalized angle it means zero is zero degree and one is 360 degree okay and 0.5 is 180 degree right so with normalized in niagara system it's always uh, easier to work with okay and you can see we have the rotation angle as a float in here but i want to change it to random range float so we have a minimum and maximum value in here you always know when you randomize something in niagara system it always looks better so let's just change this to 0.25 and 0.5, okay? I think no, it looks a lot better, right? Or smoke looks a lot better. So, so that was it, guys, for this video. We did create a cool effect with our sub UV images. And in the future video, I will show you how you can use this smoke on a fire as well. So we create a fire and add this smoke onto that fire, and it will look beautiful. Believe me. Please, 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 if you want to help me, hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. It's my honor to have you here. Believe me. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.